Well, hello and welcome to the Llama Commerce Show, this week's edition. Welcome to the Llama Commerce Show. We have some issues with the It microphone. fell over right before it we went fell over live. Right, but that, that's what happens in show business. That's right, especially that when you're live. You can't take back the screw-ups. And Brent screws up all the time. I therefore, do. Usually it's off-camera. Yeah. That's both, actually. So. Uh, so excited you could join us, though. Today we've got a fantastic topic. And as you can tell, we have a guest in the studio. Which in, the gonna, studio. in the studio! Looking out! So normally we ignore them for the first like five minutes of the yeah. show, but we can't, we can't do, do that today. because Tyler is right here. This is Tyler right Headley from GoodwheelCompany.com. Super happy to have you, oh, Tyler. Thanks but, for having uh, me. But this is the Llama Commerce Show live every Friday, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, although right now I think it's Central Daylight Time. Central Did you guys know that? Time. It's actually CDT, CDT. right now. Nobody does that, though. Even Nobody super that. smart people are like, they're, they're sending me EST, PST. It is no, PDT, EDT. And CDT. I had someone ask me the other day, they're like, I sent CDT, and they're like, what does that mean? Yeah. Is that like CST? No, yeah, it's like, like that only it's right. Yeah, it's like okay. cool daylight time. Yeah, exactly. Like, whatever. Anyway. So just like always, we have our good friend Ott, and Ott signifies who's winning in the show. So who's delivering the most value? Who's actually coming to the table and to the show with good stuff to deliver to you? So we will be awarding that to some lucky person at the end of the show. show. At the end of the show, you don't get to mm -hmm. keep it, though. It stays here on the show, you but really it is new There's really no value, and it's made of plastic. So That's true, more. but other than that, it's anyway, amazing. So as always, we are doing our best to demystify e-commerce into digestible, actionable bites, and that's why we have Tyler here, because Tyler's doing some pretty crazy awesome stuff. Um, I was just talking to him during the pre-show, and I'm just blown away, so I'm so excited. I've already gained like one really huge takeaway talking to Great. Tyler about his business, yeah. so he, he's already he's already like in the runnings for this, way ahead of us at this it's point. It's looking pretty time, good so, so far. Yeah, yeah, it's looking bad, depending on how you look at it, which is how I look. It's looking bad, <laughs> so I, I really take a lot of pride in what it's not. I know you do. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so uh, Tyler, just tell us briefly a little bit about your business, how you got into it, what you do, why you're passionate about it, Give us the give us the, the elevator pitch, but we're going from one to hundred in the in the elevator levels. Sure. So it means take your time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I started accidentally selling on Craigslist. I was familiar with tires and wheels. I uh, grew up around that. My father had a shop uh, in a small town, and uh, I saw some opportunities on Craigslist and realized after a little bit that this was actually a business. And uh, how can I scale this up? And make it legitimate, and so took that route. Officially started in 2011, Goodwill Company, and uh, went multiple channels: eBay, Amazon, and then the website. And then continued. In that order, was it eBay, Amazon, and then the website? Yes, and okay. they uh, also continue to do Craigslist, and that continues to be a great stream of revenue. Uh, so that's the gist of what I do: selling auto parts, uh, particularly wheels and tires. Uh, for aftermarket, uh, very good. So, so Craigslist. I, I got to ask one question before we dig into some of the customer service stuff because that's what we're really focused on. But I have this burning question: When you do Craigslist, they always try to like cordon you into one geographic. Do you do you uh, are you able to break that barrier and 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 you know do multiple geographies? Uh, yeah, there's they do have some limitations. Uh, there's ways uh, to utilize those to your advantage. And uh, there's ways to to hit multiple markets in uh, in a legal and uh, user acceptable way through Craigslist. So Very good. That, that's that's awesome. I never I never figured that out. I, I right. yeah no. You I, just I, break I, all the rules, don't you? I didn't break the rules. No, I stopped. Okay. Okay. Good. So anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. And if I did break the rules, I couldn't say it on live oh, the show the, anyway. The but I really didn't. I didn't break the rules. Anyway, it's fantastic. How did this well, come on me and, and 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 making me culpable for something? How did you turn it on that? Like I didn't that? even try. It just yes, happened. No, it's whatever. Guilty conscience, I think. So, so what we really want to talk about is yes, customer service, though, absolutely. and I'm really really amped about that. So get this, yeah. guys. Uh, right now, uh, Tyler has the number one rated uh, Amazon and eBay customer feedback of anyone in his uh, in, in the by like a, Is that what you say? In the auto parts. In the, in the auto parts section. So not pretty by awesome. a little bit either. It's, not, it's, it's really not like awesome. it's a close race here. Tyler is leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else. You're like you're lapping your competition <laughs> in terms of customer reviews. And the yeah. quality of those. Reviews. And we, we were looking through the reviews, and I mean, it's just we're, we're blown away. I saw some some really interesting themes through that. So I'm really curious to find out, um, you know, what drives that kind of feedback and that quality of feedback. What do you think those key drivers are? And I think, and maybe to preface that, was that accidental? Mm -hmm. Like, did you just kind of stumble upon, yeah. like, oh, whoa, this was actually working, or did you deliberately think 
we've got to wow people with circus. Good question. Thank you. Great question. So originally, I knew when I started this thing that the customer service was going to be important to me because I can't stand dealing with you know companies that give you the run around if you have an issue with their product or service. And so I, I decided out of the case that was something that was going to be a focus. I didn't realize how much of a focus it would be as uh, went into it, but really it, it was something that developed accidentally, uh, the method that we use uh, by an issue that we were having where we're selling these uh, highly technical products, tires and wheels, and we would have customers check out with them, we would ship it to them, and then they would call us and say, these don't fit our vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to go through the whole process of getting a getting the product back, yeah. you know, the shipping costs and all that. So we sat down and said, how are we going to fix this? And so the most logical thing seemed to be to contact the customer, allow them to check out, and then immediately contact them and go over the order with them and then, uh, you know, make sure they got the right thing. And, uh, and through that doorway, we discovered so many possibilities that mm -hmm. really – Took our business to the next level. So, wow. and I think I think what Tyler's saying, he's saying it like it's like matter of fact. But we look through the reviews, and if you have a highly technical or high value uh, pr product or like a high price product, um, I think this is really really huge. And this is the one takeaway that I was I was mentioning Tyler that you you know you shared with me before the show that's so huge, and that is uh, if it's highly technical or high priced item, follow up to make sure after they place the order to make sure that they actually got it right. Personalized contact. That's huge. I think that will shock people. Like yeah. I just ordered on Amazon and now yeah. the seller's calling me. And we yeah. know it we know it shocks people because we've looked we've looked at the reviews. Everybody says like that. Yeah. Every third review is like well, they were amazing. Oh and by the way, they actually followed up to make sure that it was the right fit for my vehicle and I'm yeah. blown away. And do you is it very often that you find that someone got it wrong? So you make that phone call and then they got the they got the order yeah, wrong? It is and then you can fix it. It is surprisingly high the percentage of people that accidentally Like what percentage do you think get it wrong? Uh Conservatively, probably 20%. Whoa! 20%? <laughs> Can you imagine the fallout Man. from how many people would have gotten the wrong product had he not done that? All the shipping costs, that all those insane. issues that would go with it's that. That's insane. The time. So, so really, not only is that a good practice um, because it makes people happy, yeah. but it also saves you considerable yeah. time and money and Absolutely. energy no. and headache. Wow, it's powerful. It's, it's win, win. Indeed. And it's a win for us because we have it on the show. It's like a win, win, win. I feel like I'm on an episode the of The Office. <laughs> yeah. Except we're not mediating anything yeah. anyway. In, indeed. That's fantastic. So I think that is that is so huge. So you're dealing with a very technical product. It has to fit just right. Uh, and I'm curious to hear a little bit more about like when you know when you step that through that. So I'm understanding you you experienced the problem in your own business. You were having this issue. You were sending it out and they weren't getting it right. Which I think is a lesson all in itself. Is yeah. sometimes yeah. the mistakes you make in your business. Look at them like opportunities and figure yeah, out absolutely. this might be happening in other other people's yeah. businesses as well. The the the, the it's user, gotta be happening to the competitor, your the competitors cons yeah, as well. Yeah. The consumer has to be experiencing yeah. this on, on all fronts. So right. you know when if we solve this really really well, uh, you know maybe we can create a differentiator, which is exactly exactly what you did. So yeah. so you step through that that doorway. You started doing this follow up. What did that lead you into? What else did you start doing yeah. in terms of customer service? Talk us through that. So that's that's really the exciting part. So we discovered that through that we would build these relationships with uh, our customers and you know no matter how technical or how much people use the internet to shop retail uh, the human aspect of mm -hmm. that is never going to go away and so they would be surprised that we would call and then they I was I thought originally that maybe they would have some sort of resistance to that like you're invading my privacy yeah. Yeah. but the exact opposite was the case they loved it and so through that, uh, we had a great opportunity to then cross-sell them other products that they were interested in, and we didn't feel like, and they didn't have a response like we were, you know, just trying to sell, sell, sell. But they were like, "Oh, that's great! I also need that. I was looking for that, and you offer it too, and I, I, I'd love to buy it from you." And so, so how does that conversation go then? You're so you're helping them through, making sure they've got the right wheel. And then you say, you know what? I'm looking at that order, and for that for that set of wheels, this also works well for it. Or how does that conversation go? Yeah. To well, thankfully, I have some really, really talented uh, uh, customer service. For people that staff. are passionate about the, the yeah. accessories, they're passionate yeah. about the products. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, we get on the phone with them, and we we kind of feel them out. Like if, if that's something that, that seems like a doorway would open up, we will go into that conversation with them. If it's not something, if you can tell they just want to go off the phone, yeah. uh, which is not really that often the case, yeah. then we'll go. We'll just, you know, we it's not the purpose. It's not right. the point of that right. conversation. 
It's just if the opportunity right. is there and there's a need to be, to yeah. be met there, and they, you'll have that they oftentimes will ask us mm -hmm. if we sell this because they're also looking for it. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. It's also interesting because when someone's working on their car and they're enhancing their car, they usually don't want to just stop at wheels. They want to yeah. do some other things as well. Right. And right. if they feel like you're really trustworthy and you're passionate, then they want to talk. Yeah. Want to talk. So one of the keys that I can see, this is so contrary to the, the, the current trend in the e-commerce ecosystem. The merchant mentality has been up to, you know, recently has been less phone calls, right. more efficiency, right. get it all done online because then I can scale as much as I want to and right. I just have to worry about inventory don't even and put fulfillment. Your phone number on there. Yeah, like, yeah, cut all, all these that. hoops to jump through. And, what, and what I've been seeing is that Amazon is the efficiency beast. So they're going to do it. If, if, you know, if, if you want to buy like that and you don't want that high touch customer service, you're probably going to buy from Amazon, and, and that's the way that, that works. But yeah, yeah. I, I am so happy to see the trend now pendulum swinging back into high-quality customer service as a key differentiating point yeah. in e-commerce. SEO is no longer as easy of a differentiator. All these, you know, there's all those other things that have been used for differentiation before that have been more, um, I don't know, more distant from the consumer, more distant yeah. from the user. Well, we're getting back to the core of business. I'm so excited about that because we're talking about how we're going to delight the customer again. And it, it allows the little guy to compete with folks like Amazon right. or others because exactly. you can do that high-touch, unique yeah. customer service right. that other people can't do. Right. So it really puts you ahead of the game. So, so my question leading into that, oh, I'm sorry, Brett, did I interrupt you? I'm so glad because it's probably more <laughs> valuable than whatever you were going to say. Well, I... You know, the one point I want to make quickly okay, fine. is that I think we have to think about the fact that customer service is not just about doing the right thing, although it is that, but customer service is marketing, right? If you look at Zappos, which is one of my favorite yeah. companies because I like to buy shoes, is that, you know, they, they intentionally in the beginning did not spend money on advertising because they wanted to invest that money in customer service yeah. because they knew that was going to fuel their marketing. And I think you're seeing that, that yeah. same fact. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm wondering, because one of the key challenges that's faced, that, that is why people are so afraid of doing this whole yeah. you know, high-touch high customer service, I think, is just scalability. Yeah. They want to be able to scale like that. So as you're, you're seeing the growth, uh, you know, you're, you're having, I can assume you're just getting con you know, continually more demand for what you're doing. How do you scale well, given that you do have that high-touch customer service, and you have to have more customer service reps that are, you're, like you're saying, you have these high-quality, talented customer service right. reps how do you scale well, given that you've got to find that quality? Yeah, and I think it's a, it's a slower growth process for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's not the best business model for every company. But uh, it's a differentiator in a market that continues to get more saturated. Mm -hmm. the competition is higher and higher. And the, the options that the customers have uh, continue to grow. And also customer loyalty continues to go down because, mm -hmm. you know, it's find the cheapest price, buy it, move on. Mm -hmm. But when we develop these relationships with the customers, they come back to us. Mm -hmm. If we can still compete on this, the price level, yeah. they already know us. Uh, so as far as scaling it, I think with anything, if you're going to grow, you have to become more organized. You have to be highly selective of the personnel that you have uh, representing your mm -hmm. company, selling uh, your products. You're going to have to spend money. And uh, it's the same thing as if you went out and spent a lot of money on marketing. If you're going to scale out and you're going to spend money on Google AdWords or you know, whatever, uh, your strategy is there. You can dump a lot of money in that to get in a certain number of clients, but what we can do through cross-selling, just by having the in-house, uh, mm -hmm. you know, qualified people, uh, is you know, that pays for that staff. Right. I would assume that right. cross-selling activity pays for the right. staff right there, That's and then you get all the other benefits of having the staff. And it's, but it's not just about. Of course, it's not just about like the the pay. You know, the, the, right. the compensation. It's about finding those people. That is a you know the huge. And I think what you're saying is right on. It's just slower growth from a from a team size perspective. Yeah. One thing that I found to be true in with with our own business with Class Lama is that we've actually made a very similar choice to like we're not going to grow super fast. We're not going to hire a ton of people and just blow up our team size and, and scale our, our productive capacity. We're going to focus on staying lean and mean and quality. And, and what I found in that is that um, the opportunities begin to present themselves organically yeah. as you do that, as you stay true to that focus on what is, you know, doing the doing the right thing. The and right people are attracted to that. That's in a, right. In a lot of cases. In yeah. time. People that are passionate about wheels are drawn to you because right. you're passionate about wheels. I think it's just two things. You'll hit a tipping point where you just be able to do some new and interesting things because of the kind of fan base you've created around you. Yeah. And secondly, something I'd like to talk to you a little bit about offline um, after the show is you know, how do you take that lean, mean team, and how do you, you know, is there a way that you can drive more value with that really, really, um, you know, amazing core team that you have, drive value in a way that's scalable despite 
uh, you know, despite not scaling the team as quickly? And that's a question that we've been asking at Class yeah. and we've been working through. But I think there's huge opportunities when, when you stay true to those those yeah. you know those core values. Um, there's there's a lot of opportunity to drive tremendous amounts of leveraged value to the market by leveraging leveraging that goal that you have at that core. Yeah, yeah. So so that'd be interesting to talk a little bit more about after the show. But um, so talk us through like um, some some something about the reviews you've been driving because reviews are a big part of your business. Yeah. Right? With Amazon and eBay. So talk us through like. How you get reviews? What that looks like? Uh, you know, what do you do with bad reviews? How do you view bad reviews? Well, you know, just talk through it. Yeah, let, me, let me set that up just a little bit. And oh, I know, than I know I everybody. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know everybody knows how important reviews are, but I've got a good friend of mine, a marketer, and that's what that's all he does with his agency is he focuses on ratings and reviews. Yeah. How do you drive those? How do you increase those? He's got all kinds of statistics, and I won't get these exactly right, but it's something like eighty to ninety percent of people will trust. A recommendation from a friend, but almost as many, it's like 70% will trust good reviews online. Yeah. If there's a lot of them, Especially if they if feel like they're lot. authentic, yeah. Yeah. and if there's like a pattern in those reviews, people totally trust that. Yeah. And I've heard so, I've heard metrics as high as like 65% of people before they make a purchasing decision will actually I read the reviews. Do. And I, I do too do. as well. It's a big part of my purchasing decision. So uh, so great tee up, Brad. I'm so glad you jumped in there. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously. Reviews are huge, especially for your business, because it's eBay and Amazon. That's a big driver of your business. Right. It's even more important. Um, so talk us through that. Yeah. So it starts with the way we we obviously contact the customers right out of the gates. Then with troubleshooting issues, we've actually had some of our best reviews uh, with customers that had a problem with our order. Absolutely. Yep. And the way that we handled it, reaction time, and you know mm -hmm. just thorough, uh, favorable action for the customer. Uh, has led to they'll they'll take the time to sit down and write these incredible reviews, mm -hmm. come back to us, become loyal customers, all because we accidentally messed something up on the order vision. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, so that that's you know just handling those those uh, situations that seem like uh, problems as opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, Which you've already demonstrated once because you had a problem and then you turned it into a had solution. Had a problem with all these wrong orders. I think I, I feel like this is a awesome. theme here. Yeah. And this is really really important for you know for for all of you who are who are listening and watching is. Is when you make mistakes, it's okay. Because guess what? Everybody does it in every single industry. You are going to make mistakes. It is how we rise up and 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 face those mistakes that we've made that makes us who we are. And there's, really, there's gold in those sticking points. points. That's and right. In those failure points, there's gold there because everybody else is experiencing it. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, from that point, we do a follow up with all of our customers. And at this point, they've already know who we are uh, because we contacted them, spoke to them. Uh, at some point during mm -hmm. the process, and uh, we will ask them for their feedback, and hopefully, based on the experience they've had, if it assuming it's positive. How do you phrase that? Just curious, and I'm sure there are people out there wondering, you know, yeah. how do you ask for mm -hmm. that referral? We 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 simply uh, say thank you so much for your order. Uh, if there's anything else we can do, let us know, and we would love if you would like to re leave a review for us. Yeah. We don't ask for them to leave a good review. We just kind of assume right. that yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. the exactly. idea. So yeah, and oftentimes they do. Uh, still, that's always a challenge trying to increase that review rate because uh, everybody's busy and you know it's it's a. Uh, so it's so funny because I love how soft spoken Tyler is, by the way, because he's in here just talking about these things and like like the bells are going off in my mind. It's like how many times do you get a call from somebody and they say, "Hey, thank you for your order." Like what? Nobody ever calls me about that. Yeah, it's no, crazy. I know. So I mean, this is huge stuff, Tyler. I think you're really doing some amazing stuff that is forward thinking, which is odd because customer service has always been important, but within e-commerce. What you're doing is forward thinking, and it's really, really kind great. Kind of following the golden rule, but you're you're really making it. You're doing it in an area where nobody has felt like they needed to follow a golden yeah, rule. People just love it. Do people ever invite you over for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> they come over, take a ride in the auto. You know, yeah. Yeah. even if you get close to that, the fact that you get close to that, I think is really, yeah. really huge yeah. when we're talking about e-commerce. And I think there are probably different ways to do it. So I've, I know a, a jeweler, a merchant, who's phenomenally successful, and they do some of the same things. Yeah. Like they've determined that they're just going to create this awesome experience. And so they actually do a handwritten note with yeah. each order, it, and and you know not everybody can do that, but it's like you get this handwritten note. It's not like a fake handwritten font, you know. Ticket so it's higher ticket you items. Do yeah, that. And they're making you know. But that's the key thing. You're doing some higher ticket items as well. So there's always a difference. I think it's important to yeah, note here. Sure. If you're doing low end ticket items, yeah. uh, you're not going to so be able to have that high touch. That make sense. With, yeah, with with the customer service side of things, you're just not going to be able to be as high touch. Yeah, and that's uh, that's something that we've actually had discussions about writing handwritten notes to these people because 
we've become that's part of our brand, especially these these customers expect that super personal one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction. And and one of the things that we're looking at uh, doing that's more that would be more uh, scalable would be the text messaging uh, marketing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with being able to contact those customers mm -hmm. uh, through text and, and getting them to be part of like a text newsletter. Which, by the way, is normally annoying for people. They don't really want to be part of text messaging. It happens a lot. It's very not intrusive. Set up that way. But the thing is, I mean, with Tyler, the, the, his team calling people proactively after an order is placed to check on it. And then after the fact to say thank you for your order. Do you do that 100% of the time? No, we, we, we do combine that with uh, email. So okay. We'll do some of our interaction will be via email, but uh, we usually speak at least once with every customer. That's awesome. That's you know what would also be cool? Since you're selling on Amazon or in other places where they don't get a feel for who you are, they get they get the phone calls yeah. to me that way. It'd be cool to to put in each order like a postcard with a picture of the core team. Like here's your here's your yeah. goodwill team. Yeah. So they can kind of see you. Maybe you guys all sign. And that could be something that was mass produced. Yeah. But it kind of be kind of cool if they open up the that wheels. Personality about, there. That yeah. Warmth. We love these people. Well, now they see your picture. Yeah. Just good. They've already felt that warmth that. in the in the actual relationships. Yeah. So that actually see idea. it, I think, would be really really good. And that could take them then from ordering on Amazon to ordering. On and that's another side. thing is Amazon. One thing about Amazon, love them or hate them. One thing about Amazon that is challenging for the independent e-commerce merchant is that they take your customer data. It's not your customer. It's an Amazon customer, and and it never becomes. And, and a long customer. live Amazon. They're great in a lot of in a lot of areas, but yes. But maybe much better to own that. Maybe Tyler's so. found a way around this by making proactive calls out there to get their information and get that direct contact with them. Um, I think that's brilliant. So if you can afford to do that, not only are you. I mean, this is important. Not only are you cre like creating this huge like bastion of customer service strength, yeah. but you're also creating the opportunity to actually get their customer information and have a relationship with yeah. that customer instead of letting Amazon do it poorly, yeah. which yeah, they do. They, they do. In a lot of ways, they But do. that's their deal, though. That's their deal. That's their deal. If, if they're an efficiency... You know that going in. You know that's that right. shopping in Amazon, you know that's what you're going to fix. Yes, exactly. So that's amazing. So uh, are there any other items, things that you want to share that you think would help other merchants out there that have been really pivotal in your history and you know mistakes you've made, lessons you've learned that you'd like to share? Sure. I, one thing uh, that I would like to touch on would be the irrational customer. Okay. Everybody has the irrational customer. Yeah, what do you do with them? So in those situations, you have to realize that you're not going to win. Because you can't logically... What? what? <laughs> you can't keep fighting? Like, we should just stay on the phone with this person for as long as possible and figure it out. <laughs> and in the beginning, you know, uh, I would I would sit there and, and be full of anxiety. How am I going to get around this? How am I going to, you know, handle this this person? And what they're asking is unreasonable. You know, that sort of thing. That It's going to happen in every business. And what we learned uh, over time was we we come up with the most quick, simple solution for them that's going to leave them satisfied to the degree that they can be satisfied. Yeah. Uh, without and they never love you. Entire farm. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, and and then you move on and don't, you know, you could spend a whole day, but that you could be out improving your business, uh, dealing with other great customers. Um, instead, of, you could be tied up with someone and, and allowing them to basically drain you. Of the energy that you have to do way more productive things, so we handle it as best we can. We move on. We don't we don't spend a lot of time. If if it costs us, we we, we figure that cost into the cost of doing business. business. Yeah. Right. Cost right. of preventing a bad review as well. Yeah. Right? I mean, right. That's yeah. the way you look at it. Because one bad review now for you, because you're so because you've got so many good reviews, one bad review wouldn't be catastrophic, but it still has an impact. Yeah. We we always strive for perfection. Two two day three years we have not yet received a bad review. Yeah, one neutral review. Yeah, right? one neutral yeah. review. Yeah. And in that review, he said, "This is a great company. I just had a problem with my order, and they handled it very quickly." And, <laughs> and they made that neutral. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, but here's so what people are critics. <laughs> people will look through that though, and I, I think you know, we, Kurt and I were both saying we we both read reviews before we buy a product. But I think you'll you'll read that, and if you see one that sounds like a crazy person or like that review, we'll we'll mentally at least check that as a as a good review. Yeah, you know, as you, as the shopper is scanning and looking. Yeah, but at I mean, it. let's just back up the truck and just recognize no negative reviews. We're talking about one neutral review. It's like that's true. Yeah. You know, it wasn't that bad. It's like there's no negative reviews. <laughs> no negative <laughs> no reviews at all. Right. How many people? I know this will go unspoken a lot. And I know we touched on the percentages a minute ago, but how many people that order mention the reviews? They mention I bought from you because all uh, the reviews. Not few, everybody's gonna verbalize that. But I'm definitely, definitely I would say I would say ten percent of them they make a comment about it. Yeah. Wow. And That's then, huge. you know, I would say five percent uh, actually 
like our they get us on the phone, like they'll call us initially, initiate the the, the purchase, and uh, they'll they'll just have this excitement. Like they've read all the reviews and they come into the the yeah. business deal already excited and can't wait to, to wow. do business with yes. us. Yeah, so I think really that, whole, about the experience all that whole ten percent yeah. thing. I've heard this thing about about um, killing. Uh, spiders in your house. It's that they say they, this is a great sales pitch. I heard, but it's like <laughs> if you see three spiders, there's 300 of them. In your house. <laughs> so I'm thinking if you have 10% of the people verbalizing the reviews, you probably have 80% that have actually benefited from reading them or more. Or more. So yeah. I mean, I'm Absolutely. not trying to call your customers spiders or something that we want to eradicate. <laughs> that that's that's not what I'm trying to say. Actually, it all came I think out it's wrong. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, totally is. Yeah. So okay, so I think it's really great. Like that whole um, that whole customer you can't satisfy. First of all, I really appreciate you being transparent about that because all the merchants out there do deal Everybody with that. Faces there are all the customers yeah. out there. We're not saying anything bad about those customers, but that that bottom, you know, two to five percent of those customers that want that 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 indescribable thing that you just can't give them, yeah. you know, to be diplomatic towards them mm -hmm. and while retaining your ability to focus on your core business yeah. is, I think, what you're representing. That even if you have to lose a little bit of money. Or, or whatever, break even, yeah. lose a little bit, whatever you need to do to get past it and, and kind of, dis, uh, uh, what's the word, to um, dispel the negative energy yeah, yeah. around diffuse it. it. Diffuse, diffuse it. Situation. Thank you. That's the word. Diffuse the negative energy and move on and keep focused on your core business. I think that is such a Because I think advice. some people, especially smaller merchants or those that are just they getting chase started, it. they chase it, they yeah. get emotionally wrapped up in yeah. it. It just it creates all this angst and anxiety. They stay up at night thinking about that one customer, yeah, but, but they just can't make happen. Deal with it fairly. Do what's right. Try to prevent right. that negative review, and then move on. I, lo I love that advice. It's very, very good advice. Yes. So awesome. I'm just blown away by this interview. I'm so happy you came in today, Tyler. It feels super weird yeah. to have three people in front of the camera. Is, it is I just want you to know. Yeah, and because you were Jesse's friend, we had to be honest. We had yeah. no expectations. <laughs> Jesse Tyler <laughs> is sitting behind the camera right now because no, he looks better Jesse, off camera. Jesse is awesome. Uh, he, Without Jesse, this show would not be what it is. This show wouldn't be, and we wouldn't be talking to, to Tyler right now. I almost call him Jesse because Jesse's last name is Tyler, yeah. and Tyler's first name is Tyler, That's which you know yeah. inherently. Yeah. So That's anyway, great. this is amazing. Uh, the, what the, the actual advice that we're coming out with. First of all, I think one of those key things that, that, we've, that we've touched on is um, look at the mistakes that you're making as yeah. opportunities to... to There's if, gold if, in those mistakes. If you're making those mistakes, others are making those mistakes Absolutely. as well. How can you turn that into a big win? I think the Zappos reference is very, very, you know, yeah. very good because yeah. they did that in, in their model as well. Um, but, but use those mistakes to, to see where you can create differentiate in the market. And secondly, Use mistakes made with uh, with customers to create raving fans. Yeah. Like people don't see the opportunity there. If you've got, if you made a mistake, they can be your most can, loyal customers. They'll become. You make the phone call. You connect with them. You have that high touch. They become your raving fan. They'll put a, put a review and say, "Yeah, they made a mistake, but whoa, they went way over uh, above and beyond to make it right." Those are the kind of fans that are the, the most ardently committed to your brand. Yeah, yeah. I think you also have to look at it as an actual buy. Making personalized contact, if it makes sense. I think for most merchants it will make sense. There are a few exceptions. But whether that's a phone call, which I would recommend. I mean, after hearing this story, phone call makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Maybe that's a handwritten Amazing. note. Maybe it's a postcard with your pictures on it. Something personal, a personalized contact mm -hmm. with every customer. And can. not in order to sell, just because you care. Because you will yeah. sell. Yeah. And make that not your goal. Yeah, not absolutely. Care. Right. Yeah. And, and if, you're, if your objective is to sell, then I think you're in the wrong business because ultimately, if you're going to succeed in e-commerce, you actually have to care about the value you deliver. Yeah. So it's very important you're pivoting from that point yeah. and look for the opportunities to add more value through selling because you have something good to offer. Yeah. Yeah. But make sure your objective in that contact is delivering value to the, right. to the customer and making sure that they really did get what they needed to get. Yeah, and I think maybe as a third takeaway and as an action item. We're on five now. This is the fifth takeaway. Is it really? We're not That's counting. Not, yeah, I'm not counting at all. Maybe wow. it's four. I'm really bad. We're going to have to review it later. It doesn't matter. But what does matter <laughs> is that you ask for reviews. Reviews are so powerful. It's like, yeah. in my opinion, it's one of the most powerful marketing weapons you will ever have. So ask for the review. Yeah. I think you guys nailed it on when to do it. So you, you make sure the order is right initially. Mm -hmm. They receive it. They receive it. Then you call. Is there anything else we can do for you? And you we'd love it if you if you leave a review. It's helpful for us. It's also helpful for other people in your situation. How many sites? How many sites have you been on where you go to their products? And this this is an SMB market, the small and medium business market, where you've gone to their site, and there's one or no reviews on almost all of their products. I see it all, all the time. time, over and over again. It feels risky. I mean, that feels like it feels kind of dangerous. Like as a shopper, you know, do I do I trust this because I don't have enough? Feedback to know if I should. I just got an idea live on this show. I got an idea about a feature that we can build <laughs> out about how to make it where uh, the problem with small, the SMB market is that they can't add reviews for individual or for for, for the whole company. 
you can do that on eBay and Amazon, but you can't do that on a site and just say, Pardon. here's what I felt about their overall customer service, and I think that would be amazing. That would be amazing, because then if you see that, then you can say, well, even if this one product's not great, they'll take care of it. You heard it on the show. If you build it before we do, you're in big trouble. That's great. So If you uh, just say TM after a statement. Trademark. It's trademark. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's what I heard. I'll hyperskip TM on everything I just said. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know if trademark is actually the right word. Uh, uh, patent. Patent, patent pending. Patent it's pending because I just thought about a patent, but I might actually get it, so it's patent pending. Copyright. That's not officially patent pending. It's true. The USPTO has not heard anything about this at all. We'll see. Okay. Fingers what? crossed. Sorry? I have no idea. What are you saying? I'm like, I'm confused. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, we should probably close this show up because yes. um, it's getting kind of zany in here. It is getting So, Ott! Ott obviously goes to Tyler because we feel bad for all of our uh, visitors and guests because they have to put up with us for they the whole do, show. They endure a lot. So, Especially pre-show. You had to endure, endure the whole pre-show yeah, shenanigans. He even showed up during our, our photo, yeah. photo shoot, which you'll see the awful results of later. Yeah, um, but he showed up during the middle of that, and, uh, and we treated him quite badly. So I'm sorry about that, Tyler. Um, so here's hey, a trophy you don't get to take with you. So you don't get to take <laughs> this trophy. Yeah, there you go. Plastic trophy. You don't even get to put it on your shelf. Uh, and he has a broken arm as well. But um, check out uh, Tyler's site if you are in the market for any aftermarket auto parts. So take a look at the site. And frankly, I mean, just spend you know I don't know a thousand dollars on some tires just to experience the the, the customer market service. Market research. Delivers. Good market research. You can share that with your team. <laughs> go buy some wheels. That's right. So go buy wheels. It's it's GoodWheelCompany.com. You can also find them on eBay and Amazon. And uh, with that, we're going to say thank you, Tyler, very much, so much for being on the show. Thanks for coming. It was a lot of fun. And really you good. all out there, all the few people that watch us, the, the non-persons, yeah, my that. mother, and, and who knows who else that's, my, that's watching my us. My wife tunes in like once a month. Yeah, that's, pretty, that's really sweet of her. <laughs> yeah. I, guess, I guess what we're trying to say is stay classy. Stay classy. Thanks, everybody. Okay, Tyler, we're live still. And we need to not be live. Quick, turn it off. Quick. We're, we're still live.